In this one, you're going to want to set up the Heroku command line interface. It's really simple. You just go to devcenter.heroku.com slash articles slash Heroku dash CLI, or you can just Google Heroku CLI and it should take you here. Now the Heroku command line interface, what it does is it gives us a way to deploy our app to Heroku, but it also gives us Git. Git is a version control system. So Git, that is what I'm talking about here. Git right here, version control system. And you can also install it directly on the Git homepage or the Git repository homepage. And you can run through the installation here, but the Heroku command line interface does it for us. So we actually don't have to do anything. There's a couple different ways on how we can go about doing it. One is with Homebrew. The other is the direct installer. And then finally, if you're on Windows, there's one for Windows and also for different versions of Linux. Now, this thing is actually really useful for us and it will help us actually launch our project onto Heroku. This is not the only way to do it, but it's definitely the best way to do it. So if I actually copy this Homebrew stuff, again, this assumes that you have Homebrew installed, which Homebrew installation is actually really easy. You just paste their installation and um, you're gonna have to type in your super user password. Now, in my case, I have stuff that is not actually going through, um, but I should have Homebrew working. Let's go ahead and just do brew install Heroku. And I actually have no permissions to do it. So since I don't have permissions, I'm just gonna go to the install installer and that just downloaded. I'll go ahead and keep it. I'll open this up and I'll just go through the installation process in this case. And this might um, take a moment, so I'm gonna pause the video. Okay, so the installation was successful. I'm gonna remove the installer. And now if I, do, if I type out Heroku now, um, I should see something like this, right? So I should not get an error basically, but I will see that my Heroku um, app is working or at least something related to it. Okay, so now that we've got Heroku installed, I have to initialize Git into my actual Django project. Now I'm gonna be doing it inside of where manage.py is for Heroku, but if you look at our GitHub, which will have a actual repository for this project itself, it's not gonna be in here. It's gonna be a little different as far as what's going on here, but basically keep in mind that what you see on GitHub, where we actually store all of our code for you guys to use is gonna be a lot different than what your project's gonna have, or well, it's gonna be subtly different. And that will be all available here on GitHub at once we're done with it. All right, so if I type out Git, I should get something like this. But what I'm gonna do now is just do Git init. And this initializes an empty GitHub repository in here. If I do ls-al, I will see that there is that folder in there. If for some reason you ever mess up with Git, you can just do remove or rm-rf.git, and that removes it out. And if I do git init again, it will create that repository for me. Now, we're not gonna go into how to use git that much here. So if you ever run into little issues with this portion, um, just remove that GitHub repository, and then you might have to restart your app on Heroku, that is delete your app, and then make a new one. Um, there's nothing wrong with that as far as you're testing things as you get going. So uh, now that I have Git initialized here, I can actually run Git status and I see all of these things that are related to Git status um, or the things that are not tracked. So this means that they are not in your GitHub repository and they're not ready to be pushed to Heroku. So again, there's a lot of stuff related to Git that I just will not be going through in here. Um, but what I want to do is create a Git ignore file. So I'll just do um, I'll create that git ignore file in Sublime Text. So open up Sublime Text. I'm gonna go ahead and, well, first of all, I wanna add folder to this project. So I wanna actually make my idea project a real thing. And I'm just gonna use the virtual environment, hit open, and I'm gonna save this project inside of that virtual environment right here as ideas. Okay, so now that we've got this virtual environment made, I'm gonna go into the SRC folder and I'm gonna make a new file in here. And I'm going to save it as dot, dot git ignore. And yes, you want to use dot git ignore just like that. Um, it will show up here, which is nice. 
And what I want to ignore is the settings for local. So I don't want the local settings in here. So to use that, notice where dot get ignore is, it's in the SRC folder. I'm going to do ideas slash settings slash local dot pi. We're going to save that. This is important before I actually add anything, because if I could do get status now, um, my local file should not do anything for it. So I'll just do git add dash dash all. This is adding all of my things to the git ignore file. And then I'll do do git commit message equals to initial commit. So git add dash dash all and then git commit with a little message. This is saying, hey, we did some changes here and now we are ready to push this to somewhere. But I noticed that I have some PYC files in here, which I don't actually want. And in fact, I don't want a lot of sort of Python things that aren't showing up, but something you should note is local.py was not actually created here. So I made some mistakes with Git is the point. So now what I'm gonna do is go into GitHub and do GitHub Python git, uh, git ignore file. And I'm gonna click on the git ignore file for Python, go to raw, and I'm just gonna copy this entire thing and paste it below my git ignore stuff. So I'll go ahead and save that. Back into my terminal, I'm gonna clear everything out and I'm gonna remove rf.git and now I'll do git status. It says it's not a repository, which is what we wanted. Now I do git init. Now if I do git status, some things may have changed. I actually don't want ds store, so I'll go ahead and copy that. Also put that there. Git status again, notice it's removing some of those things. I don't necessarily need my database on there as well. Um, so you could add that too, but I'm gonna leave it just because I'm gonna push it to the GitHub repository once it's ready. So I'm gonna go ahead and do git status and I'll do git add dash dash all, git commit, initial, it's initial commit again. And now if I do git status, notice I don't have any changes, but also a lot of things are gone. Right. And the reason I wanted to show you that way, the long way, is so you can see that, you know, deleting the GitHub repository doesn't delete your code as long as you do it as we did, which was this, right? Or excuse me, not the GitHub repository, but the Git repository, the local Git repository does not delete all of your code. Deleting a GitHub repository will delete all the code that's on GitHub, but this just deletes the version changing. So when I say version changing, if I go into production.py and I hit false as debug, which is what you should have on production, and you do get status now, you see that, hey, there's some changes that were made. So I can just do git add dash dash all, git commit message or dash m, and then production um, settings changed. So you wanna be pretty verbose on your message here. I press enter. And notice it says one file changed, one insertion, and one deletion. So what it basically just said was, hey, you changed your production file, and that repository is actually showing all those changes. And you can see that by doing git log, it shows our two different changes here that actually occurred. Now, if I delete, oops, if I uh, delete this git this git folder in here, it will delete all of those uh, like tracked changes which is fine, our code didn't change, but it allows me to see the things that actually um, were changed throughout Git. Now, why is this important? Is because when we push it to Heroku, we actually wanna have the ability to see what these changes are because if you make a mistake using Git with these uh, Git logs, uh, or excuse me, Git log, you can actually go back in time, you can go back to a different change. So let's say for instance, I changed some settings um, and I messed up, I can, I can actually revert back to this item here. So by doing git reset dash dash hard, I can actually use this commit and now it brings me back to the initial commit and I do git status and it's showing nothing has changed. If I go into production, ooh, the debug is now true. So that's where that that like really allows you to just jump back in time using Git. If I change this back to false and do Git status, there it is. It's back to um, what we needed, which is Git add. Um, notice I did the dot there. That's a way to supplement doing Git add dash dash all dot. Um, will track the changes as well. And then we do Git commit message production settings changed. 
and then now we could run all of our things related to Heroku. So the next one will actually set up Heroku. This was much more about Git than it was Heroku. Uh, but the the different the, the the commands that I just showed you um, are fairly straightforward, and these are the ones that you're going to want to remember. So Git reset hard, and then whatever the commit item is, or just Git reset hard will take you back one level. Um, so whatever that change is, this will adding in the commit ID takes you back to whatever that commit ID was, but then git add. So git add dash dash all or git add period and then git commit and then some message. And then um, notice it basically said there's nothing to commit. So that message didn't do anything. And then later we'll be doing git push um, to Heroku itself. All right, so in the next one, we'll actually set up Heroku. If you have any questions on Git stuff, let us know. Um, we do have a series on Git, a very basic series on Git on codingforentrepreneurs.com slash projects. Um, so that is another place to learn a little bit more about Git, but there is a lot of things that you can do to get beyond this. I just wanted to show you this because we need it to use for Heroku. Thanks for watching. We'll see you in the next one.